Denial is the worst form of self-indulgence. A warrior sees his faults as being his passage to power. Deun Mares. Bending, Not Breaking. The Dragon Prince Edition. Book 2. Episode 2. Half Moon Lies. Welcome back to Bending Not Breaking. This is Ben Pruitt, your host for the Dragon Prince edition of Bending Not Breaking. We are so glad you're here, and I just want to thank you for listening to us and giving us this opportunity to talk about life lessons that we can learn from cartoons like The Dragon Prince and Avatar The Last Airbender and The Legend of Korra, and we'll see where else we venture in the future. I'm, I'm just really thankful that you're here, you're present, and... I'm just hopeful that we can continue this wonderful journey together, at least through the end of The Dragon Prince, and then maybe into some more Korra, because Season 2 has got a lot to offer of Korra as well. And so, while I have you present and listening, I'd love to just welcome you to join our Facebook group, which is newly open to everyone please join us it's bending not breaking and we talk about the show we talk about the episodes that we have on the podcast generally ask fun questions regardless of whether you're a patreon supporter or not we'd love to have you join that group speaking of patreon you can also help our podcast grow and become more uh, accessible to others by supporting us on Patreon. We have been uh, we've been very well supported by a few uh, loyal patrons over the course of this pandemic year, and I just want to thank everyone that has stuck with us and given us this opportunity to lean into these wonderful things that we've been doing. I just appreciate everyone for helping us out. Uh, again, you can find us on Patreon at BNB underscore pod. For now, though, I would like to transition into our episode. And we are talking about episode two of season two, book two, if you will, uh, called Half Moon Lies Through a Lens of Indulgence. And indulgence is a tricky word because it has this, like negative quality to it where uh indulgence is like pleasure seeking uh and letting yourself uh in enjoy pleasure pleasurable activities whatever it might be and generally it's to to the point where it becomes harmful or not as good for you so you know resting for instance and taking a nap is something that we are we have an inherent right to it is a radical act of resistance to the capitalist you know cultivated culture that we live in to to take a nap and rest but some people would argue that no that's indulgent that's harmful you're losing production time and that time is valuable and so this this indulgence thing has a there's a lot of judgment around what is indulgence and what is rest and what is simply pleasure seeking, but it doesn't cross into that, that negative category. And for me, I have found that I struggle with this just as much as other people do. (laughs) And I am naturally a judgy person and I'm, you know, working on that, but humans are naturally judgy and I've learned to accept that. And when we are talking about taking time to ourselves to just just for pleasure i think that when it starts to feel indulgent it starts to have you know stories attached to it and i wonder where that line is right between no i deserve to rest. I deserve to take a break. I deserve to 
you know, live my life without feeling miserable because I'm so exhausted. And then also, no, that kind of is indulgent. I'm, I, I could be doing more. And I think that's the problem is that we could always be doing more. And so it's, if, if that is our goal, if that is our story, then indulgence becomes a shame tape. And I just, I, I want to explore that as we talk about this episode and as we go through these moments uh, talking about indulgence and where it comes from and where does that judgment come from in me? Because I, since I'm not having this as a conversation with someone, I really want to just be, be critical of what I'm calling indulgent in and of itself. And so uh, help me uh, by... If you hear something that I say that, you know, that doesn't seem like indulgence at all, even though I may have said it, then send me a voicemail. Tell me about it. We'll uh, put it on the air and we'll have a conversation with your voicemail. I'd love to to engage with you. Uh, But for now, let's dive into this episode. But first, before we go into our top five, we've got to do a recap. And by we, I mean me. So I'm going to do my best. And away we go. So Rayla feels like sleepy time and she's faking it. And then Soren's like, he tries to kill her. But, you know, Callum is in a very blasé way, tries to convince them that they'll, she waits till tomorrow and then fight to the death then. And Claudia and Soren have this moment and then they meet Zim over pancakes. And then Soren lies about dead Harrow, which jerk. And then everyone talks about trust and trust and trust. And Callum romantically shows Claudia around the moon mountain. And then Soren zipline poorly and then tries to kill Ezra. And then, had, you know, Callum whispers judgmentally about dark magic. Rayla's on to Soren and confronts Callum about it. They don't have that kind of trust yet oh my god and then Rayla talks to Lu Jane who is like advice is like both yikes and kind of oof and then Viren makes magic eye drops and yells at the mirror slash himself with this little temper tantrum and then there's an image in the mirror and then the moon nexus date and then there's Callum tells uh, Claudia tells Callum about Harrow and then it's just really sad <gasps> okay all right you know that wasn't 30 seconds but you, I, there's there's a lot that ha- I already cut a lot I cut a lot from what I wanted to say it's just it's hard to get everything in 30 seconds I say that every time. I should probably just be like, nope, and that's it. Thank you for listening to my my recap. It was my pleasure. <laughs> it's just never how I feel. Uh, maybe perhaps me going into that rant after the recap every time is a little indulgent. I don't know. Ugh, there's your segue. <laughs> but okay, 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 okay. So now we're moving into our segment uh, of our top five, top five moments of the lens. And again, our lens is indulgence. And again, these are not in any particular order. They're just ones that I happen to pick out from my notes. So first one I want to talk about is throughout the episode and really up to this point in the series, we have been grappling with Rayla not having told Callum about Harrow's death. And... I want to recognize how difficult it is to lean into the vulnerability of having to share something so difficult. And I know it's hard, but I wonder if we could look at this as a form of indulgence. And I think, again, I, th- I wonder if, it, if it's possible to be really empathetic of, of indulgence. Because I wonder when you become empathetic and when you really lean into like, no, I totally get why you did that. I wonder if it ceases to become indulgence. I wonder if the word changes because I just, I don't know. Anyway, I'm, I'm having an awkward time thinking about it. But let's assume that we can call this moment indulgence. And, and the reason I'm calling it that is when we choose comfort over courage, I wonder if that's a form of indulgence. In the, in the sense that it is, it's, it's pleasure-seeking for ourselves so that we can avoid a difficult conversation, right? So that we can avoid making others feel pain or even ourselves feel pain instead of having the courage to lean into that vulnerability and lean into that emotional pain and, and, and break the news. And I believe the right thing to do is is to tell is to is to be honest and say hey Callum and and hey Ezrin this is I need to tell you something and I have absolutely been the person who has not 
who has indulged in my own personal comfort over that of the, the courage that I would like to exhibit in sharing what I believe is really important. And I think Rayla's been grappling with that for a long time. And I wonder if that is a uh, something that builds. So I wonder if when we indulge in comfort over courage, I wonder if it becomes harder and harder to to choose courage when we have given ourselves the opportunity to indulge in comfort. And so I'm curious about this, and I, I, I wonder if it's kind of a, uh, a slippery slope fallacy kind of a thing where, oh, well, if you indulge once, then it becomes harder every time you do it. And I don't know. I, I Part of me thinks that that narrative feels right for me, and then other parts of it is like, no, I think that it just requires a, a change. And what we're seeing is... Rayla grappling with that and, and learning how to navigate it. And, you know, at the end of this episode, we we see that she doesn't have the opportunity, or I guess that's not true. She had the opportunity a long time, but she never seized the day, if you will, and took that opportunity to tell Callum. Instead, Claudia had the opportunity to do that. When I think it would have been way more trust-building if Rayla had done it a lot sooner. Okay, uh, I want to move on to our, our next uh, item on our top five. Uh, the next item for me is kind of like following this train. It, I, I think we are much more likely to indulge others when we need something from them. So if other people have, you know, uh, what's the word? <laughs> Sometimes people have, you know, they grind our gears a little bit. They do things that get on our nerves or they do things that we put up with and we don't really love what's going on. But you know what? When we need something from people, it seems like we're more likely to indulge in those characteristics. And I, I, I think that's what Claudia is doing with Callum in this episode. And Honestly, I'm going to be real. This this whole episode felt so much more sinister on this watch through because Claudia is clearly capitalizing on convincing Callum and she's doing it through like leaning into the the trust between them and their relationship and it really feels like she just has learned how to manipulate people from from Viren and it's it's way more than I remember because you know she seems so innocent she's like goes all hard eyes over Zim she loves all the animals and then she talks about like squeezing them to death and it's just like ooh there's this like there's this darkness to Claudia that is it, it feels like the you know the story between the two wolves where whichever one you feed is the one that wins it seems like those two wolves are fighting within Claudia and they're really struggling and it's just really fascinating to 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 watch this because it feels like she's indulging in in Callum's you know fawning over her and it feels less like she is reciprocating and more like she is using it and I'm just curious how do y'all feel about this what 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 comes to your mind when you watch this episode again through you know with hindsight of having seen everything I'm, I'm curious about what it looks like in how indulgence kind of paints this picture. Uh, I guess it's making more, making me more critical, but I'd love to hear your thoughts. Remember, you can send voicemails and voice memos to thearcofe at gmail.com. Okay, let's move on to number three. Number three is about Viren. And Viren seems like he has time to indulge in figuring out what is going on with this mirror while Claudia and Soren are doing the, the quote, dirty work of, you know, not only attempting to k kill the princes, but also, like, retrieving the egg. And it's just really interesting that when you have privileged and means, you can have more opportunity to indulge in the things you uh, like indulging in. And for Viren, it's how do I indulge in doing what I feel will give me more 
power or leverage. And I think that's what this mirror is for him. It's just such a powerful object. And I, I think that the reason I'm calling this indulgence is not, again, hindsight 2020, right? But I'm really capitalizing on this temper tantrum that Viren has at the end. And I'm, I'm calling it that because it's it might be more, more than a temper tantrum, but... It's just a sign of indulgence that, like, when you are imbibing more than is good for you. And this is not just a pleasure for pleasure's sake. It's a pleasure that steps into the bounds of more than is good for you. And I feel like that's what we see. We see that tipping point where, you know, it's one thing to do a puzzle, right? And to, like, really be curious about what this, how to solve it. But then when you can't do it, it becomes mentally taxing and takes over our in my entire emotional landscape and I, I think that's a sign of indulgence for me right because you can have like for instance there's a difference between really loving a piece of chocolate and saving it and holding on to it and when you are ready to have this moment of bliss you enjoy that piece of chocolate versus you stuffing chocolate into your mouth again and again and again in order to not feel what you're trying to avoid right I, I think that those are two very different pictures and I think there's obviously a middle ground in between those two things too but it feels like this mirror could just be a puzzle for Viren, but it seems like there's so much hanging on it that he's indulging to the point that it is becoming a problem. Um, and so that's my thought on Viren's indulgence. Now I want to move to my fourth point, which is Soren. And there's this moment where Claudia is with Soren and they're talking. And Soren accuses Claudia of like, just enjoying herself and going on dates and doing all these things. And Claudia's like, are you kidding? You built a zip line. And he replies, I had no joy in that. Uh, and I'm, I think I might be paraphrasing, but that's just a moment that is one. It's well, for me watching, it's extremely comical, but it's also just really poignant because how true is this moment where this this should have created joy, right? It's a zip line. You're you're going across a ravine. It looks incredibly fun, and it's 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 not an indulgence for Soren. This was work for him. This was something that he was like struggling to do, and he didn't want to do it, and he did it anyway. He was being creative in the sense of trying to accomplish his his role for Viren, and when we perceive this moment, it looks like, without our understanding and knowledge of what Soren is going through, it looks like, oh, let's build a zip line. it'll be fun, because that's how he pitches it, and I just, I find that to be really tragic in a way, because I think the stories we tell ourselves help cultivate a more judgmental view of what others are indulging in, or frankly, not indulging in because what is fun for me is not necessarily fun for you and even if we know a person really well like Claudia and Soren do we don't always know what's going through their minds and what's going through their heads and when we assume it becomes a problem and I just wonder what it would be like to lean into those moments where People say, like, I, I took no joy in that. And, you know, if, the, if it truly seems like that's not a joke, let's not avoid that moment. Let's lean into it and say, oh, tell, tell me more. And I just think a lot, of, a lot of things could be solved if we leaned into things like that. Um, kind of a side note, I, I really also <laughs> thought about talking about Soren's uh, potential labeling uh, his moment of wielding and flaring his sword at the beginning of the fight at the very beginning of the episode is indulgent, right? And <laughs> Rayla's like, so are we going to fight now? Or And it's just one of those things where I, I wonder if that flare was indulgent or not. 
but that's kind of like oh, that's your little bonus indulgence moment. My fifth, my fifth moment, my last one for the for the episode is also, I guess, coming from the very beginning, and it's this moment where they started fighting Rayla and um, Soren and Claudia's like, "What do I do? What do I do?" and Callum just comes in at the very beginning here and just leaning on this trust he has between all of them in a very just blasé way says, indulge me, trust me, indulge me. And if I haven't convinced you by tomorrow, you can go fighting again. And it's just that the amount of confidence that exuded from Callum knowing that he he knew them all so well that he could convince them that they were in the right. He had so much faith in Claudia and Soren and faith in Rayla. And I, I find that to be really beautiful, if not somewhat naive. And like, I just, I really wish I could be like that. I, I just admire Callum for this moment and being, a, being so trusting of, of everyone. And that, yeah, I just... I find it really endearing. That's that's my that's my thing right there. Okay, 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 okay. We're gonna take a short musical interlude and then we will be right back for our lens MVP and some gratitude. all right all right welcome back we are glad that you are here and i am glad that you are here because i get to you know talk about cool things like the dragon prince and theoretically there are a few people who are listening to me and enjoying what i'm talking about but that's okay that's so my nomination for mvp is me me i am the mvp just kidding uh i am not (laughs) uh for indulgence I do want to nominate Soren, and Soren, and it's I, actually it's not for any of the reasons I talked about earlier. I I, I want to nominate Soren because he's indulging Viren in a way that is making him struggle so much, and it's preventing him from experiencing joy, and it really just makes me sad. And so I'm I'm you know pouring one out for Soren and and saying thank you for. Being this person who cares so much about his father that he's willing to indulge something so difficult. And I'm, I maybe thank you is the wrong word, but I just, I see it and I'm, I understand, even though I might make a different decision, I understand it and I get it. And I want to offer him this nomination for the MVP for indulgence. Whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, I do not know, but he's my nomination if you have a nomination, I'd love to hear it. Uh, you can send us a voicemail at thearcofe at gmail.com. And we'd love to hear your nomination and potentially why. And if you send one in, we will, we'll post it and then we'll have a Twitter poll to see which one people prefer. Okay, let's move on to our final segment, which is gratitude. Now, remember, for those of you who are joining us, Uh, Gratitude is this moment where we just take an opportunity to be thankful for a character, whether they are around the lens or not. It doesn't matter what the lens is. This is just about gratitude here. And so I'm going to be grateful for Lujane this week because she has taken the time to offer wisdom. She's comforted the dragging. She's fed them. She's cared for them. And they're they're all just a little bit better for knowing her. Even even though she's a little um, interesting around the edges, I, I think that they're all better off having known her. And I think I am too. So thank you all for indulging me by listening to this episode and joining me and helping me cultivate a, a little bit better of a world using the Dragon Prince. That's, that's the goal. So remember you can find us on... Uh, all the Twitter, all of the social media handles, Twitter, 
Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, all the things. Uh, and that's at BNB underscore pod, which is the same way you can find us on Patreon. Big thanks to the Arc of E, Alex Mayfield, Noah Blanchard, Kira Martin, and Max Gongware. And until next time, be well and do good.